So hi, uh, welcome to Polyhack9. I'm Leo, also known as Inamathy Online, including in the Slack and on GitHub, which has now been acquired by Microsoft. I'm not going to whisper. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can also find my blog at uh, inamathy.ca, so I thoroughly own this. And this talk is entitled Stupid Web Games in Common List. And the reason that it's entitled that is, as you can see from the latest post on my blog, Lisp Game Jam 2018, I participated in Lisp Game Jam 2018. I made a game called Clobble. It took number 13 out of 27, which is an okay showing, I guess. And here is Clobble. Um, it's exactly what you would expect given the name Clobble. Let's see if I can, okay, so like dire, I guess. There, that's a word. Oh, look, shit, that's the clear part. Okay. Um, uh, crap. Uh, sorry? L-I-R-E. L-I, oh, L-Y-R-E? Yeah, sure. Okay, cool. If you like keyboards and have both of your hands, you can actually also type these things. I just don't have that. Um, so let's see, Myers, sure, Dyers. Anyway, you get the idea. You get the idea. So this is a little, like, absolutely minimal implementation of Boggle in Common Lisp. And the reason that I wanted to do this is because I was actually, um, not exactly test writing, but I guess, like, dog fooding an editor that I've been writing in Common Lisp called CL Notebook, which is like, if you've ever used IPython Notebook, this is IPython Notebook except with Lisp instead of Python. And I know about Jupyter and it sucks, and that's why I'm doing this. Um, <laughs> so this is the Common Lisp code that generate, generated Clobble. It is a browser game, right? I just showed you guys this running in browser, and a lot of people were kind of surprised that Lisp is a thing that you could use to make games at all, let alone games that run in browser. Um, there is a library in Common Lisp called Perenscript, which hooks into this editor that I've written called um, called Seal Notebook. The Perenscript uh, compiler basically lets you take Common Lisp and compile it to JavaScript. And let's see if this will work. If I hit verbose, this should do something. This doesn't do anything. I'm running on a remote instance here. I will show you this over here in a separate window, which we will talk about later. Um, if you hit the verbose mode on one of these things, what you get is the JavaScript that this common list compiles down to. So you can see that this definition of a score variable goes into score, this definition of a function goes into a function call, and so forth. Um, this is the code that implements Clobble. So you've got a few hacks up here, up top, because... Oh, Jesus. Um, so the size of the dictionary file that I was using to check against to see whether the word that you had just typed in was a real word was something on the order of seven megs, which means that I couldn't inline it inside of this notebook because it would bloat the history of the file to some huge number by the time I was done this project and I didn't want to do that. Short story, there's a hack. It's right here. It's labeled hackity hack, and we will say no more about this. In order to implement Clobble, we implement some dice, and this line alone, actually these four characters alone, accounted for something like two extra hours of development time on this game. Because except for this specific die face, every one of these things is one letter. And when you think about what you have to do in order to get a QU key to act properly, let's see if I can find one, Q, and then U, and then when you delete, it deletes the entire thing, as opposed to clicking this was a non-trivial problem that I really enjoyed working on, but this is the reason that I chose such a simple implementation for the Lisp Game Jam and probably ended up getting not as high a, a ranking as I, I ought to have. Um, I was looking to get something that was that was really quick off the ground so that I could uh, so that I could text drive this editor. Um, so we've got a few utility functions here. We've got a basic front end that shows you how to how to um, render to the DOM in a way that lets you generate things like this. Um, we've also got the game logic down at, down at the bottom here, which involves claimed words. This is, I think, where QU comes in somewhere here. But this is actually not what I want to give my talk on. Oh, there we go. This is the QU logic down here. Um, this is not actually what I want to give my talk on. Oh, that's perfect. Um, I already showed a link to my blog. If you want to see a write-up of this game, that's going to be there in another couple of weeks after I get off my ass and do that. Um, for now, what I actually wanted to show you was, hey, stupid web games, not stupid web game. Let's try to make one. Now, this is the only thing that I didn't actually think about in this talk, which is how am I going to type while holding a microphone? Is there any way that we could get some kind of practice? <laughs> Jesus, okay. 
Oh my god, that's awesome. All right. So we're, we're going to get kind of a slow start while the mic stand gets, gets put back up. No, no, it's okay. I got this um, for the moment. Okay. So here's a, sep a separate thing. This is a stupid web game. Thank you, by the way, thank you very much, Zach, for letting me completely harangue your laptop by installing SBCL on it immediately before this presentation so that this runs properly. You won't count this out towards your time. That's totally fine. Don't worry about it. Um, so here's some CSS. Thank you. Okay. Oh, I mean, kind of <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi. 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 We have to rotate this until you can hear my deep, sexy voice um, narrating this, this game development thing that's going to be happening here. Okay, is this okay? There we go. That's good? Okay, I will try very hard not to move from this spot for the rest of this talk. Okay. <laughs> So here is a stupid web game. This is the stupidest web game that could possibly exist. When you click new game, it shows you a thing. When you click the thing, it says you clicked the thing. When you hit main menu, you can go back to the main menu and keep clicking this thing. Yay. I submit that this is the stupidest web game that could possibly exist. Right? You, you click one thing. You, you start the game, you click one thing that drops you out of the game loop into um, a score table ostensibly, except your score is always going to be one because there's always exactly one thing to click. Um, that drops you back into a loop that gets you to the, the front of the game. Okay, here's how this is implemented. Here's a bunch of styling. This is the thing that is making the game board act the way that it is, and you can see that it's sort of offset and floating, that way we can work on it while we're also coding. Okay, this is the actual div that is representing that game, and here is the implementation for the absolute simplest game ever. I already showed you some of this. Um, we've got a score, we've got a, an event that happens when a target is clicked. Right now it just goes to game over, although it does also remove the target for some reason that I'm not entirely clear on. I don't think we need this. Oh, crap, oh, that's right, okay. Um, thank you, Zach, for, using, for letting me use your laptop this way, but also um, you don't use Emacs, and therefore your caps lock key is caps lock, and that's mildly annoying, but I will try to work through it. <coughs> <laughs> I will own this. It's totally fine. Don't worry about it. Um, okay, so we can add a target to the board, and the way that we add a target to the board is we append a div to it that has the class game target. That's what's happening over there. Um, we also add a listener to the target, which is in this case just a click event, and we do nothing else. In order to play a game, you empty the board, and then you add a target to the board. In order to get to game over, you render the score. This one which includes a, a main menu key. Down here we've got all of the rendering functions, which is exactly what you'd expect. You can see little snippets of something called CL in here. So like you can, those of you who do web development will recognize the words div and class. Um, this is a compiler within a compiler. Inside of the paren script implementation in, in Common Lisp is a thing called P, who ps HTML, which, uh, well, let me, maybe, maybe it's easier to just show you this. Okay, so like you can see how the call to this actually expands into this little piece of string and function concatenation that then that will then get uh, pasted into the the appropriate uh, place in the source code. So with this, what's happening here is we're creating the div with the class game target. This is getting uh, translated into HTML and then it's getting pasted onto the board, which you would assume from the function name of DOM append. Um, okay. The actual templates are mostly this kind of code. So you've got various list items and you've got various um, divs and you've got various classes and those are named as they are so that they can, they can be rendered to in this, with these styles. Um, let's take a look at what happens if we change some of these. So I've got a line in here that is the score. Let's make sure, about, let's make sure that we've got this. So new game, the score, there we go, our score is zero. Why is our score zero? Because our score is zero. Um, let's say that we do, okay, on add target, what we are going to do is, oops, I am doing the thing for you, sorry. Um, on add, tar on click, uh, sorry, not on add target, oops, on click target. Uh, instead of just going to game over, we are also going to increment Increment the score. So let's see if this works. Yes, the score is incremented. Of 
course, there's a bug that I introduced here because this board is not clear every time that you clear the thing. Although maybe this is a metagame of some sort, I don't know. Um, I feel like maybe game over should also set the score back to zero. Does that sound, like, reasonable? Okay, cool. Yes, there we go. And now we've got that thing happening. Um, and actually, that menu is also kind of bugging me. Sorry, just one second. This is, I was not planning for this, but let's do it while I'm here. I mean, probably, but <laughs> I don't want to. We can do that later if you like. What did the earmuffs mean? The earmuffs. So this is a global variable. Um, in this case, earmuffs don't actually think what you think they mean. Sorry, don't actually mean what you think they mean. Uh, in this case, they actually just mean this is going to be an all-capped variable in the, uh, in the JavaScript output. In common list, this is a dynamic variable, so various other weird things happen. Um, okay. So in addition to incrementing score and going to game over, we can make this do other things. For example, maybe when you click on a target, you get a new target. Is that a thing we can do? Sure. And this is going to be a little hacky because of what I did earlier, but hey. And one dot, I think it's game board. So, right, except now that that does that. Okay, maybe what we really want is add target. Let's see, so this, this div class thing, we don't really want the same position every time. So let's do this in the stupid way. Um, I think our board size is 400. So what I'm going to do here is make sure that this thing appears at a random position inside of the board instead of just at the same corner, and then we can, we'll be able to see more stuff appearing, hopefully. Uh, I think that is the right number of parentheses. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Right, except we fixed that quote bug end quote earlier <laughs> where we're removing the target, and that was dumb. Wasn't it? Okay, let's see if that works now. Now we are removing the targets that we're doing, except there's still five of them, because holy crap, stuff is going on. <laughs> um, okay, let's see now. So maybe when you click a target, um, if the score is higher than 10, it ends your game? Are you Oops. hot swapping this code? I'm hot swapping this code right now the entire time. Thank you for that. So. <laughs> what did you think I was doing up here? Uh, let's see, score... Well, it's going to be recompiling this and reloading the game state. Oh, I guess. You're keeping the game state yeah. while you swap the code out from under us. Um, if... Oh, sorry. Yeah, that seems incredibly uh, dangerous. Are you fixing the bug that's going to go away when you return it? Oops. Maybe? Um, well, we still want the game to end eventually, right? If we don't, If we don't do this part, then this game will go on forever. Um, I'm at 10 minutes, by the way, so tell me when I should shut up and we can take questions. Okay. I mean, like, while people are interested... Okay, I, I see. I mean, that's fair enough, sure. Um, so I guess we'll add this one more thing and then I will take questions. Uh, that sounds like a good break point. Okay. Whee! Does this actually work? Yay, there we go, you click the thing, except something is happening with my score, that's really weird. Oh, right, because we, before we render, uh, that sucks. Thank you, thank you for recognizing the bug, let's do this. One last thing, and then I will end, end this thing. Yay, okay, there is more things that we can do, but unfortunately this is as much of a stupid web game as I can plausibly build inside of 10 minutes in common list on somebody else's MacBook. So let's call the let's call the floor open to questions. <laughs> Go on, Mike, Michael. So, other than uh, shits and giggles, what would be the natural application of this process? By this process, you mean? I mean, like creating a web gaming list. That's basically it. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a way to take this code and this game that you made and 
kind of like redeploy it? Like so outside of the context like, of a browser or? Yeah, so, well, I mean like the platforms where you can kind of deploy a game. Yeah. How would you get them on there? So I mean the point of this process, and I actually have an exporter, this is still in like extreme beta, but like on my personal copy of Single Lookbook, I have an exporter here that is itch.io. That specifically, like the way that I put this game up yeah. was by doing the process that you just saw me do, except I did it for about, I'm going to say about six hours instead of ten minutes. Right. And at the end of it, I hit that export button and it gave me this web page that I then uploaded to itch.io. So okay. this is like That's a legit yeah. game development tool for some value of game. Um, <laughs> but I mean, why would you do it this way? I don't know. I just, I find it fun. So well, I do it this way. <laughs> Yeah. Some sort of uh, basic sort of component, right? I mean, like AI was developed for Lisp, or rather, Lisp was, you know, like there's a relationship. They co developed right? each yeah. other, yeah, yeah totally. Exactly. <laughs> right. so, so, what I was thinking is that uh, if you actually, you know, because the exporter that you're using literally converts Lisp into JavaScript, right? Yes. You know, so what you can do is you can somewhat kind of try and see if you can get some sort of complex AI mm -hmm. process that you would, that would take a shorter amount of time to develop in Lisp and giant numbers amount of time to develop JavaScript, but because of the exporter that you've created and, what yep. that, and all that, it actually be a lot simplified and you can have AI developing yep. Lisp, but convert it to JavaScript for some, once again, unknown X value reason. Yeah. yeah. No, this is a legitimate thing. So, so my perspective on game, and I mean, we have actual game developments here, so I know you are all going to think this is wrong, but I kind of tend to feel like if I'm going to be building a web game, if a game right now, it had better be like a thing in browser, because then you can do all of the cool server things. And also, you can own the, the deployment environment. And also, nobody cares what language it's running on on the back end, which yes. is why I can use crazy things like Commonos. Um, so as far as I'm like, if I were to make this a thing that I do regularly, which I'm going to try for the next month, I seem to have enough spare time lined up, um, I would try it with common list for the reason that this is a language I like, this is the process that I think is the right way to build games, and it's really, really fast. I mean, this is a pretty stupid game, but I built it in five minutes from a little bit of a pre-made shell. That's not bad. I feel like I could scale that pretty well. We've got another question. Oh, sorry, should I be repeating these questions for the mic? That would be great. Okay. Last question. Last question. Um, so I noticed you have some like code hints going on. Uh, how does that work? Code hints? You mean like when I write things like defun, it yeah. gives me yeah, what's, these things? Yeah. What's going on there? How are you doing that technically? So this is um, this is going to be a little bit of a longer thing. So the editor that I'm using, CL Notebook, which again, it's up on my GitHub. Feel free to star this or fork it or do whatever it is that you like to it. Um, one of the things that it does, I don't have an internet connection? Okay, I guess. So I can't show you, unfortunately. So one of the things that it can do is uh, there is a back-end server call that gives you completions of a symbol at point. And so what I can do is give it a code block and then give it a seg, like a frac, like, um, I give it a context, I give it a code block, and I give it a, an incomplete string in that code block and it just gives me a bunch of a bunch of completions. This is like a technical, this is a technical implementation detail of the editor that I'm using. So are you setting it to brand script then? Yes, so yeah. the, the editor, so on the server side here, what we've got is an endpoint that exposes both completions and when you get to a completed, uh, when you get to a completed symbol, you also get this little like arg hint. Um, both of those things are API calls. On the, in this editor, the front end is basically just making that call as you type and showing the results in a pretty fashion. Just to recap, uh, you built a web-based editor for Lisp. Yes. Using Lisp. I I built a web-based editor in Lisp using Lisp. For Lisp. For using Lisp. Lisp. Using Lisp. Inside of that, you put a web client that you can use Lisp to do things on the web. Yes. Inside your web editor for Lisp. Yes. That you built using Lisp. Yes. So how long before this is entirely self-hoisting? There's actually one <laughs> step left, which is, so there is a library called CLJS, which compiles JavaScript to common list. And that is, it is going exactly where you think it is. I, I, I would like to actually add a comment that this is recursive, the report that actually is. <laughs> Exercise. Okay. Okay.